Kirk and I were driving around in the vehicle the other day and we come across this square building. And I said, Kirk, what is that square building? And he said, it's a grain elevator, dummy. I'm like, no, it's not a grain elevator, that's square. Uh, grain elevators are round silo types, you know, the concrete silo things. He goes, no, this is the ones they used beforehand. Oh, back in the olden days, huh? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, huh. So I got to thinking, I'm about, I ought to look into that. Man has always needed to store their grain some, in some way. They, they uh, started becoming farmers and had all this grain. They had to store it through the winter and everything, and they used to store it in different ways. And if you go way back into ancient times, they had, uh, uh, like back in Egypt, let's say, you know, the Egyptian pharaohs and uh, the, the, the pyramids and whatnot, uh, I think they stored their grain ma mainly in wicker baskets you know baskets of some type and put them in a building and just you know stored them that way uh, later on uh, in more a little bit more modern times they uh, probably stored them a lot in, in bags and you know, like gunny sacks you know and stuff like that and uh, it wasn't until 1843 in Buffalo New York they decided to build a grain elevator in other words store it in bulk instead of having you know in bags and, and baskets and whatnot they just put it in one big bulk and store it well the easiest way to do that is to let gravity take take control and slide down pipes and stuff well first of all you got to get the grain up high to do that so you build a tall building and you put an elevator in it well not your elevator like you know in an office building it's a um, like an auger system of some type or uh, a, a chain and bucket method. Well, you got to turn that some way. And up until then, they really didn't have a good way to do that until they got steam power. So they had steam. The very first elevator was a steam powered lift in Buffalo, New York in 1843. It was right along the Erie Canal. And they needed it there because of all the, um, all the, uh, uh, high volume of, of uh, grains that were mainly wheat was being shipped back to the East Coast, okay? So, uh, it wasn't very long after that, they come up with electric power, and that electric power uh, elevators were basically a couple chains with a bucket strapped in between them, and it would go up over a pulley system and then back down the other side. It was just a big looping, you know, uh, um, um, conveyor belt, basically, an, uh, um, uh, um, an up and down conveyor belt. So they started building these buildings all over the country, um, mainly in the Midwest, in, in the wheat producing states and the corn producing states and stuff like that, and to store their grains. And they called them crib elevators, okay, because they were like a corn crib, but they were an elevated corn crib. Then years later, they started making them out of steel. Here's a good example of a steel uh, grain elevator. And they're square. And if you think about it, if you put a lot of, a lot of stuff, uh, you know, loose bulk material in a square box like that, what's going to happen to those straight walls? They're going to bulge out and eventually break. So how do you keep those from breaking? Well, you put reinforcements in there, basically cables. And right here, uh, from from one wall, from the, let's say the east and west wall here, from the east wall, you draw, uh, go over to the west wall and you put uh, reinforcement structure in there and then put a cable several cables in between there and that would keep the wall from bulging and you do that in, on different levels different heights and you go east and west and you also go north and south okay and somebody had the bright idea and says well why are we reinforcing a square building that's inherently unstable why don't we just make a stable building to begin with so they started making round buildings well, the best way to make a, a round building is with something like concrete, concrete and rebar, okay? And you can just pour it in its round state and it becomes very, very strong and very stable and you don't have to have all that other reinforcement in there. So they started building all these in the early 1900s, 1920, 1930, 40, 50, you know, long and through there, they built all these concrete grain elevators and they are just iconic with the American Midwest. They're all over the place. Every little town has a grain elevator, it seems. And 
you, you get to wondering, that small town has a small elevator, and this bigger town has a bigger elevator, and well, that big city, they've got a really big elevator. So you get to thinking, who's got the biggest one? <laughs> so you got to figure out which is biggest. Well, uh, what measurement are you using? Are you using length, the longest one? Okay. Are you using volume or the capacity, you know, the overall capacity? Uh, how much goes through per year? You know, uh, you might not have that much total storage capacity but you have the most volume going through for the year well i don't know about all of them but i did look up the one uh, i asked kirk i said which one's the longest one he says in hutchison kansas so okay i looked it up well here it is this is the one in hutchison kansas and the more i got to looking into it i found out no it's not the biggest it's not the longest okay uh this one is somewhere around 2700 feet it's a half mile <laughs> Yeah, half mile long building. Well, where is the biggest one? Well, I looked it up. It's 2,800 square, 20, 2,800 feet long, and it's in Hayesville, Kansas, just south of Wichita, and that is the longest grain elevator in the world. Okay, key word there is longest. It's not the biggest though. Well, I got to look. Well, who's got the biggest one? Well, let's see here. Well, the biggest wouldn't be, th those are the two longest ones, but the biggest as far as volume, well, Hutchinson, Kansas has 18.2 million bushel capacity, and Wichita, or the Hayesville, Kansas one, has, has 22.4 million bushel capacity. That's a lot. Well, then I got to look and there's one up in Salina, Kansas. It's even bigger. It's not the longest. It's not as long, but it's double wide. Okay, it's basically two elevators side by side. 32 million. <laughs> okay, well, that's the biggest individual grain elevator that I could find. 32 million bushels. Okay, then I come to find out, wait a minute. There's a town down in Oklahoma, Enid, Oklahoma, and they have 80 million bushel capacity but it's in several elevators a whole bunch of different elevators added up it's 80 million 80 million total for the whole town oh that's getting big that's getting real big well then okay uh, that's a, a town a, a complex so to say well who's got the i, I got to reading up on it 80 80 million bushels that's uh third largest in the world third largest well who's the largest well <laughs> i don't know i couldn't find out who's the largest in the second the largest and the second largest in the world i couldn't find out but i did find this out this is one last little bit of information here years ago in baltimore maryland they had an elevator that was 3.8 billion bushel capacity uh, that's unbelievable <laughs> it's not a grain elevator anymore they tore it sort of tore it down and converted it to condominiums so <laughs> if you're ever up in baltimore and you want to find out the locust point grain elevator okay the baltimore and ohio locust point grain elevator that was 3.8 billion bushel grain elevator they have converted it into the silo point condominium complex <laughs> so, and i still don't know who's second and first i still can't find that so if you i challenge you guys to come up in the comments and tell me who's second and who's the biggest complex the biggest grain complex in the world maybe not the biggest elevator but the overall complex i'm guessing it might be in canada or probably over in russia okay that'd be my guesses so with that Ciao.